Hey, what's up gamers? Sonic Kevin here, and it has been over a week and a half since Apex Season 4 has been released. So today I'm here to cover and review all of the changes and my opinions and thoughts on how this will impact the current meta. I'll break this down into three segments. New content, the rank system, and the loot and weapon changes. In terms of the battle pass, it's kind of the same as the previous ones. The Most of the rewards seem pretty lackluster, but there are some new skydive emotes that I really enjoy. My favorite part would probably be the ultimate flatline skin that you get at battle pass level 100 and 110, just because of the more visible iron sight that can be used to help you track better. Along with this battle pass, we get a new legend this season, Revenant. And he seems to be a pretty interesting character, both from a lore standpoint and from like a first glance. But after using his kit, it seems that it's generally underwhelming and mediocre at best for competitive play. His passive is kind of neat, being able to scale walls and crouch walk faster, or crab walk as we call it. Uh, but it's hard to find situations where it'd be useful, especially during a team fight. I would personally buff the Q hitbox which would make it easier to utilize the silence effect since most of the time if you don't directly impact someone or if you don't put it at a tight choke like a doorway then it won't really hit the enemy. I would also like to increase the Q damage from 10 to 30 if you hit a direct impact. It feels like a skill shot so it should do more damage like when you stick someone with an arc star in my opinion. Revenant's ult is great for some new compositions because it might open up new synergies with Crypto and possibly some other legends, but only time will tell as the competitive meta develops and shifts throughout the season. Now while we're on the topic of Revenant, I want to address some slight legend changes such as Bloodhound gaining 5 seconds to his ult timer uh, per player that he downs, and this can exceed the time that you originally get when you ult. In addition, we have Crypto, whose EMP will not destroy friendly Gibby Domes, and they also patch the bug that you can use to put a Gibby Dome onto his drone. Obviously, this was a very competitively broken mechanic, and uh, I've definitely had my fair share of funny experiences with it, but I'm kind of glad that this thing is out of the meta now, because it was very heavily abused. When it comes to new weapons, we have the Sentinel. Sentinel is a bolt action sniper and it's a very fun new weapon with an interesting disruptor charge mode which costs a shield battery to do extra shield damage. Um, it's a very cool and quirky mechanic that I enjoy just for the sake of being there. However, the charge mode is not practical in most cases. It just simply doesn't do enough damage and it takes too long to activate. So if I were to change anything, I would buff the damage just a little bit more. Um, it's not overpowered as a weapon in general, which is good for a big map that already benefits sn a sniping and poking play style. And especially in scrims, sniping has always been a very strong reserved play style for uh, endgame circles. You need to hit headshots with the Sentinel to be damage efficient in the teamfight, otherwise you're better off just using any other DMR or sniper. Uh, such as the Longbow or Scout. Moving on to the map update, we have some slight changes and additions with the beginning of Capital City being split into two and with a giant vertical lava fissure that goes through the middle of it. It's basically the same thing and it's still in my top three personal favorite places to drop. In addition, we have the Harvester uh, with an interesting multi-level design. And the loot is mostly spread out across the top with some bins on the outside on the lower levels. I like it for rotations, but personally, this is not my preferred place to drop. Alongside that, we also have a new mechanic called Uptraps, which is when you jump into a lava fissure, it will send you slowly traveling upwards back towards the closest ledge uh, where you can control the momentum and you will also take 40 damage. Also, we have Survey Camp, which is a new small point of interest between Epic Center and Skyhook. It has weapon racks like the ones from the firing range, which give players guaranteed guns versus drop versus the more diversified loot pool that you would usually find in other places with names. Uh, this is personally my favorite rotation point, and it's pretty simple to clear out and fight after winning the initial fight at Refinery or Epic Center. Stalk us. 
Hmm. He stuck me also. Tim? What was that? Did you see that guy flying? Yeah, they third partied right then. Yeah. That guy was actually flying. He was floating in the air. We have a slightly new rank system as well. With the addition of rank splits. There are splits per season every six weeks of ranked with a soft reset at the end of each split. In addition, we have the Master Rank and Predator being shifted to the top 500 per platform. The scoring works the same and it's very good to see that the soft reset happens every split because we want to make sure the rankings accurately reflect those who actively participate in the competitive game mode. Um, there is also new party restrictions for players who are in plat or higher, and they must be within one tier of all other party members. This does help combat the previous issues of boosters and cheaters who are getting on bronze and silver accounts queuing into predator games with some other players just to boost their rank higher. Moving on to the loot and weapon changes, we now have sniper ammo, and this is great because it helps differentiate the sniper from other ammo types just to make it more of a commitment in terms of inventory space and playstyle. Especially with World's Edge being such a huge map compared to King's Canyon, sniping has really taken over the meta. I think this is a good change. With energy ammo, they increase the stack that you pick up from 20 to 30 since you can now only find two energy weapons commonly on the ground, which is the Havoc and the L-Star. More on the L-Star later. They removed the turbocharger hop-up, which is kind of interesting, but it's something that I didn't really expect. Now the Havoc can only use the select fire, but more on that later as well. The G7 Scout has been moved from a sniper and is now categorized as an assault rifle. Which is kind of a meme because it is basically a sniper rifle or a DMR, but basically a sniper rifle. They reduced its fire rate, however, from 4.5 to 4, but it is still super damn strong. They increased the time between shots for double tap as well from 0.425 to 0.475. Uh, personally, I'm still not a fan of double tap, both on the G7 and the EVA 8 shotgun. Um, it's still super oppressive and one of the strongest weapons in the game just based off of raw damage and time to kill. You can literally 3-tap enemies with the level 3 helmet. It's too strong not to have a team run this gun just like the Peacekeeper in the competitive meta. So, until this gun gets another change that makes it less viable, we will yeah. continue to see people pick up this weapon for their team. Now we have the L-Star, which has been changed from the crate okay. weapon into a common energy weapon. It wasn't damage efficient before because of the reload requirement on top of the overheating passive that it had but now that you don't have to reload it it's actually more of a usable weapon they did reduce the damage from 19 to 18 per shot and also the fire rate from 12 to 10 but they did decrease the horizontal recoil which really is not that noticeable in the first place it went from a weapon not worth picking up to a usable one and it has the potential to output solid amount of damage during team fights Muzzle flash is blinding, especially without a sight. Good luck hitting people with the iron sight. It's fucking hard, I will say. You definitely want to run a 1 or a 2x on this, or a 3x if you're crazy. And uh, fighting against an L-Star is also kind of annoying because sometimes you can't see Jack when all the red like visual effects are coming towards your direction. Now moving on to the Devotion, the previous energy weapon is now a crate weapon. And uh, this was overall just a good decision because the Devotion is statistically the, the highest DPS gun that you can find in this game. And you will just lose against someone holding Mouse 1 with the Devotion if they just get close to you and you have no other source of cover or escape. Onto the Havoc, you now have the Select Fire being buffed. So there is the delay decrease from 0 0.77 to 0 0.56. And this essentially makes it a better charge rifle. Like, you have more shots per mag, you can overall put out more damage per second, and even though you don't have the slow that the charge rifle has, it uses energy weapon as well, which is more ammo efficient in a sense. And for those of you complaining how hard it is to land the shots, just aim forehead. So for the R99, we have nerf damage per shot from 12 to 11. They increased the mag size for the base gray and blue mags, but the purple mag still has a max ammo capacity of 27, I believe. This is an overall nerf to the gun, but it is still a very good weapon. It's just not as good. 
Now we have a kind of an interesting buff right here to the Prowler with the damage per shot going from 14 to 15. And this is a massive change, especially with the full auto attachment. The time to kill is now comparable, if not just slightly faster than the R99. And because it's more ammo efficient, uh, with, you know, max clip doing 500 plus damage versus the R9's 295, I believe. Um, you can definitely shred with this weapon in a team fight without having to reload as much. For the Hemlock, they increased the single fire rate from 5.6 to 6.4. And this is an interesting bring back to the previous Hemlock where single fire was primarily the main use case. Now we might see a return to the single fire Hemlock meta. But because most of Season 3, most people were only using it on Burst or not picking it up at all, I wonder if we'll see more players opt to choose to stick with the Burst rather than the Single Fire. For the Wingman, they adjusted magazine sizes from 4, 6, 8, and 10 to 5, 6, 7, and 8 respectively. Um, I'm kind of glad that the base mag is now 5 instead of 4, so you can mathematically kill people with purple armor if you hit all 5 shots. Uh, 10 shots for the purple mag felt fair, but 8 shots isn't terrible. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this change. But I don't think that the nerf to the purple mag clip was necessary. For the EVA 8 shotgun, they reduced the double tap delay between bursts from 0.85 to 0.8, just like the G7. Um, could be useful. Double tap, still not my preference on the scout. And I also do not like the EVA 8 unless it has a blue shotgun bolt or purple. For the list of new gold weapons, we have the Havoc P2020 Sentinel Prowler R301. And I think this is overall an interesting lineup. I'm glad that there's only one gold sniper. Well, unless you count the Havoc as a sniper. It basically is, but I think the gold weapon comes with a 1-2 variable, so... Eh. Um, anyways, it, because it only comes with like one major dedicated sniper, uh, which is the Sentinel... I think this is a pretty solid gold weapons list. Um, before we had the gold longbow, the gold triple take, and the gold charge rifle with like 410 digital threats. We even had the gold scout in season one and two, I believe. Um, yeah, that made sniping really, really, really strong. Uh, but I'm glad to see that they're putting most of the priority on SMGs and assault rifles because that's what Apex has always felt like to me, the sort of running gun arcade kind of multiplayer experience. And so I'm glad that they're prioritizing these sort of weapons. From what I've played so far, my overall impressions of Season 4 is that skill-based matchmaking still exists. It's not as oppressive as the one in Season 3 where you would constantly run into three stacks and uh, they would just W key you and you would die because there's literally nothing you can do in a team game like this. But it feels like they've modified the algorithm. So it seems that sometimes I run into more solo players when I'm playing solo queue. But take this with a grain of salt. I do not know how the algorithm works. I have had moments where I've run into other pros who are also solo queuing in pubs. And we get to have a good 1v1 rather than just, you know, running to a 3 stack and dying. Muzzle flash is still just as big of a problem as it's been ever since launch and you literally cannot see who you're shooting at or what you're looking at in certain less well lit areas of the map. Here's a short demo of one of the worst case scenarios of how muzzle flash and the gas visual effect affects you being able to see your target. Yeah, that, that's good. Okay, now try aiming at me. Dude, the muzzle flash on the iron side is insane. I can't see shit, dude. <laughs> Even oh, while hip firing, it's so hard. Overall, I like the map better than Season 3's iteration with the introduction of the new Lava Updrafts and also the Planet Harvester. I think it uses the space better in terms of content and also playability because there were some really open areas that just had terrible terrain. I personally can't wait for King's Canyon to return for the second split of Ranked. What do you guys think of Season 4? What do you like about it? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Now we have the L-Star, which has been changed from a quake... Quake? Ew-woo.